We've just talked to both APG and to uh, Screen, who is a, a supplier to uh, Dennis that we're going to talk to uh, in a moment. Um, talking to vendors is like always the, the dreams of what is possible and what is not possible. So let's talk to a customer. So Dennis, uh, you, uh, you work with uh, Springfield in the UK. And you did, as a disclaimer, told me that you are American, so we're not totally stupid here, right? That's correct. Yeah. I moved across in 2000. Um, at that point in time, um, we had conventional equipment um, and HP Indigos. Um, and as I said um, when we were talking in the um, meeting here, our panel, um, we made the decision to go completely digital in 2011. We got rid of our last conventional press in 2012. Um, back in the conventional days, we had SIP3. Um, we knew what SIP3 could do. But then they come out with SIP4, and then of course JDF, JMF, it, it's, a, it's a world changer. It's all about automation and integration. I can't help think about, because we're going to talk a little bit about your technology choices in a second, but uh, going from, I think there's a lot of your colleagues in the industry that are sometimes considering going digital because it has a lot of advantages, especially when, when print runs are getting shorter or you need uh, variable data, of course, right? But I was just thinking that it's also quite well known that the, the production cost is higher on digital. How did that manage in your head and when you started to go from being a flexo printer to the, an old digital printer? I think um, it was predominantly down to our customer demands, shorter print runs. Um, you can't spend 45 minutes making ready and then run a job for 10 minutes. Um, so the decision to go digital was easy from that perspective. Um, less waste and of course, um, you're not losing as much money on a conventional job. Um, as I said though earlier, when we were running the HP Indigos, we wanted to be as efficient as we could be. So we tried to go in line with um, ABG Finishing Kit. Um, initially the uh, presses weren't quite fast enough, but when we installed our first WS4500, we went in line with a ABG, ABG Digicon Series 1, and one person run that machine, print and finishing, one operator. Um, and that's how you build the efficiencies in so you could able still able to do some of the longer print runs um, rather than just short what you think digital is more accommodated for. And uh, I mean, when you went from the, from the Indigo machines to the screen printer, uh, it's also well known that uh, 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 inkjet machines are considerably cheaper than toner based. So, I mean, all in all, has it been a very good business for you to move into to the all digital solution? It has. Um, the HP Indigos, I can't knock HP because they're great machines and they run very well. Um, we were on a click rate and we were doing about 7,000 impressions a month with HP Indigo with four HPs. Um, and the reason we moved forward is because we didn't see the HP going any faster and Inkjet was significantly faster. Now the V12 is a game changer. Yeah, that's, a new, but, that's, another, that's another beast, right? Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. But uh, when we installed the first um, screen Inkjet presses, uh, four color job running at 50 meters a minute, significantly faster than even EPM with um, HP running at 38 meters a minute. Um, especially when you're talking whites, because um, when you're doing double head of whites with a null cycle on HP, um, then with um, the white on the screen, we're still running at 30 meters a minute. Um, now 50 meters a minute, so mm. significantly faster. Mm. I also noticed in your, pre oh, actually you didn't mention it, but I saw on the, on, the, on, on the photo from your production, you also have an Ecoleaf. Yes, I do. I mean, so you're one of the few that actually have machine that works and runs, not, I'm not the few that runs, but few machines out in the field, that was what I meant. <laughs> We've been doing digital embellishment for quite some time. Last level expo, we bought a um, ABG DigiJet, um, which is a JetFX solution that ABG sell. Um, and when we first installed the system in 2019, it was a bit of a delay because of COVID. Um, we were running maybe a handful of jobs um, a week. Uh, we're now doing probably 10 or 12 jobs um, a day, um, which embellishment, I think, you know, for what we're doing in um, cosmetics, Beers, wines, and spirits is important. You get a bit more for the label as well. Um, the Eco Leaf, we're just doing beta testing right now, uh, but it is a good system, sustain sustainable, um, no waste. Um, when you do cold foiling um, on the Jet FX. And I, I was just about to say, and integrated in your entire digital workflow, which is probably, in your case, even more important, right? Correct. Yeah. I mean, because basically, when you get the files, uh, delivered from customers and you want to prep them, you use the uh, ESCO and then you have all the product data and the information about the product from the MIS system, right? From the Sturm system, right? Correct. Um, well, when we receive files in, primarily from Web for, Web for Labels now from Sturm or MIS, um, ESCO is integrated with Web for Labels as well as S, um, Sturm. 
we do automated pre-flights, um, which gives us information about the file, whether it's suitable for what we're doing. Um, but it's also important what we're, what we're doing for um, embellishment because it shows if the foil la um, layer is right, if the varnish layer is right, uh, shows the cutter's right, of course. Um, all of that's automated now. Well, we don't have you know, people hounding over the files trying to establish if it's right for print. Definitely within the digital space. Um, we're now part of a larger group, as I mentioned, all for labels. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, digital for us is the way forward. We want to be the digital innovation center for all for labels in the UK. Mm. Um, also in the panel debate, uh, I think you said that you had a relationship with CERM way before you actually got into this, uh, uh, let's say, full digital setup here. So how important is CERM as a MIS ERP system for a company like yours? Very important. Um, we needed an MIS system. We were doing things through spreadsheets and through our financial package um, oh, prior you're to one deploying of CERM. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we started looking at about 2007. It's been about two years and we decided to go with CERM. And I think we made the right choice. Um, we've had various consultants over the years, but um, without CERM, we wouldn't be where we are now. The integration and the automation that we have with our MIS, with ESCO, with Screen, with AB Graphics, I think is second to none. Also, if you look at the wall here behind and you see the number of partners they have, it is like, you know, if you have a if you have something that is so critical to any business, you also mentioned the Power BI and having the, the, the business information at, at your fingertips, and then having an open uh, mindset towards a lot of different partners gives you, I would say that gives you a lot of, uh, let's say, safe choices because now you can integrate to almost anything, right? You can make business decisions based on that data, and I think that's what needs to happen in today's yeah. world. Yeah, one thing is that you make business decisions decision based on data, but I was talking about when you see the wall of all the, all the partners they have, basically if you need a new die cut or if you need a new whatever, and it is on that wall, you know it can be integrated directly Correct. into your workflow, right? It must be super nice, right? Very nice, yeah, yes. Fantastic. Dennis? Thank you very much. Great talking to you. No problem at all. Have a good day.